News tonight, Senate Republicans say there is no need to rush in setting up a state health insurance exchange. The exchange is one of those requirements in the Affordable Health Care Act, and New York is one of 40 states that have not yet set up an exchange. Joining me now with an update is the chairman of the Senate Health Committee, Senator Kempan. And Senator, thanks for taking the time tonight. Nice to be with you today. So um, this is something that Senate Democrats have tried to needle Senate Republicans on. <clears throat> um, Senator Ball, a member of your conference, um, has said he's balking at this, calling it Obamacare, which is the pejorative for the Affordable Health Care Act, the health care overhaul that was passed on the federal level. Um, so why though, why though the wait? There's a lot of arguments about how this is money that is due to the state and if it's not acted on within a certain amount of time, the state could actually lose out on federal funding. A couple of different parts of your question. Let me deal with it at once. Why didn't we act? Well, during the latter part of the legislative session ending in June, we had negotiated a bill with the other, uh, the other house and with the governor. Uh, yet it was brought up in the middle of a very uh, mixed, contentious uh, end of session, not because of this. You guys were talking about same-sex marriage, the tax cap, uh, yes. rent control. There was a lot of issues going on at that and time. And we had not arrived at a bill. So when it came up, we had someone like Senator Ball who said, you know, I didn't know what this was until I read in the New York Times yesterday that it's Obamacare. He didn't right. use a pejorative first. The press did. Um, we had another uh, senator from upstate in, in western New York say, you know, Senator Rasenhofer, are we a stat what a type of cost are we building in to the state's governance? What, what is this going to be an implication for the budget down the road? Another senator said, how many other states have done this? And they were all legitimate questions. We tried to answer them, didn't have the time to answer them, said we'll come back. Now, the second part of your question is, are we going to lose money? There's a uh, million dollars that went to every state, so we have that million. The state itself received an early innovator grant. That's about $27 million. We have that in the bank. Then the, uh, the theory was that if we didn't pass the exchange in June, we would miss out on level one funding. Um, you know what? Notwithstanding not passing it, the, the administration applied. And not only do they apply, the federal government's granted the level one funding. So we've received probably as much as or close to the top amount of funding that any state has received. Now, is there more to be had? Yes, level two funding. The deadline for that is June 2012. So it's a good ways down the road. Let's back up and also we should explain to the viewers what um, the health insurance exchange actually is. Too, good because good this point. Because yes. this is complicated stuff and quite frankly I think it should be complicated stuff because it's everybody's health care and we don't want it to be simple. Um, but essentially what this is is that it's a marketplace that insurance companies would enter into. Well, and it could be. Indiv well, individuals and businesses would then be able to. Okay. Let me take you back a little bit further, because in the state of New York, we've tried to expand health care to a lot of people. Uh, we've done child health insurance twice. We've done family health plus, uh, expanding that to about 400 percent of poverty, which is a lot of money, gets you into the $70,000 a year income for a family of four. We have Healthy New York for people who have never been insured before and their employers don't offer it. So we've expanded in a very broad way access to health insurance. The overlay to that is that the Congress and President Obama have passed their Health Care Reform Act and they say that you should set up an exchange and cover an additional 34 million Americans and in New York that would translate to something between a million and a million and a half New Yorkers. That would be the people who would get insurance that don't have it now. Now the other point of it would be how do you do that? You just offer it like a welfare program? The thought was you do it through a meeting place, an exchange uh, in, in Massachusetts, which has one. They call it a connector. And they do it on a website. And people go in and say, I have so much money. I'm eligible for this. And, and this is what I can get. The difficulty, there's all sorts of mechanical difficulties with that, plus uh, policy differences that I have, because Massachusetts done, has done very well for individuals, but I don't think they've done very well for businesses. And in America, businesses are the biggest supplier of health insurance to individuals that we have. Um, but there's another overlay that's taking place to this, and that's what's happening in Washington in the sense of it's political, but it's very much affects policy. Uh, we first had the deba debacle of uh, um, uh, the deficit fight in the end of uh, July, beginning of June. 
where I don't think either side did well, but it certainly left America wondering what direction are we going for budgeting on the federal level. And now we have the super committee set up out of that. Right. And just today, the New York Times is reporting that President Obama has sent his suggestions to the super committee. And of all things, he wants to cut Medicaid and Medicare by $320 billion over the next 10 years. Now, you talk about mixed signals to America. On one hand, you want to establish health insurance for 34 million Americans. On the other hand, you want to cut both Medicare, which people have, and the exchange should not be affecting, but also Medicaid, where the exchange should be actually wor working in lockstep. So there are mixed messages coming out of Washington as to whether we're ever going to have some type of health care So in other words, you're viewing this as a very evolving situation that's going on right now in Washington that could obviously trickle down to state government. But what, what about this issue, though, of the deadlines? There, there's uh, been reported that there's a September 30th deadline, reported that there's a, a deadline for the end of the year in order to uh, access millions of dollars in federal aid. Senator uh, Mike Gianaris was on a, a radio show uh, a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, to make a symbolic statement against the president and cost New York State millions of dollars well, is foolish. Is, not, this, is this foolish? We're not making any symbolic statement. We're pragmatic. We want to get something that works. The first deadlines were all for level one, and they were on a quarterly basis. Uh, April 1, June 30th, October 1st, December 31st. That's all moot because the state government's already applied for it and received it. So those deadlines are out. The level two, that extends into the middle of next year, and the deadline is June 30th, 2012. So I, I, whatever the, the senator uh, said, uh, he's wrong. Um, you know, but he's trying to make a political point. He's head of their campaign committee. We're pragmatic. I've, since I've been chair of health, we've tried to make sure that people get good access to health care, that more people get access to health care, and the health care has a quality to it, and we measure those qualities. So does something need to be altered in um, the measure that you guys originally introduced? Well, the measure we introduced set up a basic structure, and that was with Senator Seward and I. We had negotiated uh, uh, Assemblyman Morelli in the, uh, in the Assembly. And we had a basic structure, a public benefit corporation, don't get caught up in the existing bureaucracy. And then we set up a series of studies. So you would look at what uh, were the elements of New York State's proposal, uh, whether you have the same policies in the exchange as outside the exchange, whether it's an active exchange or it's just an information exchange. An active exchange presupposes, as in some, some uh, uh, constructs, that they would be able to deal with premiums, they would be able to deal with the subject of the policies. And my point on that one was I wanted it to either be in the exchange, you could have it active there, or we have an existing insurance regulatory structure. We shouldn't have both. We don't need dual regulation because that would just be counterproductive, but one or the other. But that was part of the study. And there were other studies. But the basic impediment, by the way, about an exchange is that the federal government is supposed to come up with a basic benefit package. In other words, how many visits will be covered, whether it's going to be medical, whether it's going to be dental. I mean, all of those aspects of health care. The federal government has yet to come up with the defining the basic benefit package. And then once they do, then it's an option to the state legislature and the governor as to whether we're going to pass laws saying the state's mandates, we have 57 mandates in state statute, extra health care initiatives such as no drive through delivery or uh, different things like that, um, should be offered to, with the uh, health insurance that's sold in this state and subject to state's regulation. Well, we have to make a decision whether or not any of those mandates will be added to the federal basic package, and then if so, who will pay for them? Because the federal law says this, the federal government's not going to pay for those added options. Has there been enough direction from the federal government? Has there been enough uh, uh, explanation of you know, what you guys are beginning to believe or look at as these like, you know, possible costs down the road for New York State? Has there been enough direction from the federal government from the Obama administration in, in implementing Well, this? they're trying, but I think they're in their direction. They're making it more muddled. They're not making it more clear. There's been three waves of rulemaking that have come out since June. Um, and in the last rulemaking, they started talking about a partnership, uh, saying, well, maybe you in the state, if you don't want to start it, we federally could start this, and then you could take it over. 
or vice versa. If you start it and you don't like it, then maybe we could take it over. Or maybe we can have you do part of it and we'll do part of it. Well, that's, you know, in terms of trying to set up a, a governance structure, that's really horrible. Uh, but tomorrow they're coming to uh, New York City. I'll be there in the morning. HHS is trying to pitch and say, we want to talk to all of you in the state legislatures uh, to see where you're going and to give you some ideas and encouragement. And, of course, my response will be, well, that's great, because you haven't done it up to now. Right. So we're almost out of time, unfortunately, but just very quickly, the governor said yesterday that he won't call the legislature back to Albany to deal with this unless there's some sort of agreement or framework in place for this to pass. Do you think the legislature will come back and vote on this before the end of the year? I don't see there's any need. I see if uh, there would, we would come back if there was a greater clarity in the federal government. But I don't see that's going to take place until the super committee decides what they're going to make cuts in, what they're going to do extensions in, where there can be savings, uh, what type of direction the federal government's going to go with its own budget. So that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Kempanen, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Nice to be with you, Dick.